Well, hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the dark winter days here in Alaska and what we do with flashlights, lanterns, and headlamps to get throughout our day here. We have no electricity, we're off grid, and just the simple fact that these long, dark Alaska winter nights make for a lot of uh, opportunities to use all sorts of gadgets to get throughout our day. So let's get into the video and we'll show you what we use and how we use it from waking up in the morning to going to bed at night. All right, let's go. These lanterns we use every day, multiple times a day. We have three in our house for our kids and for Zach and I. There's hooks all over our house on the ceilings above um, the shower but for for now you can just hang them on a handle on the cabinet and it's perfect for what you're seeing or over the sink when you're doing dishes they're by far the most convenient source of light we have they are a solar lantern so they have this little panel here that will charge when the sun is out also there's a little um, plug that you can plug it into um, when we have the generator running now i want to show you the the light that we use for our breakfast in the morning. This is a very good light to have because it's high, it's sort of like this big light, like the chandelier, but it's less light, but it's still um, worth using. The light that Chloe's talking about here is by Ryobi, um, and this huge battery here lasts for hours probably days we'll use this for days without charging this and then we'll need the generator running to recharge all the ryobi batteries okay so as we come into the bathroom here are light switches this is one of the few rooms in the house that was actually part of the remodel that actually has electricity running to it when the generator's on so when the generator is running we can actually turn on a light if we're taking a shower or something like that but here is a hook that Joe installed when you're like, I got to brush my teeth, whatever I got to do that just frees up your hands. So it's kind of funny. I know it's, it's odd to see this and see what we're used to out here, but we're so used to that. We just come in here. It illuminates everything, um, everything that we need. And then we come over here when it's time to take a shower and look what's up there. Another hook. So you go like that. It's more than enough light in here to to take a shower super simple and we don't have to run a generator for light around the house and when we're not using these um the headlamps are <laughs> this time of year usually always on my head so that's kind of how we start our morning a mixture of these three uh the ryobi light the d light led um lantern that's solar powered and then the headlamps uh, it's kind of how we start our day, whether we're going to go out and feed the dog, how we make coffee and how we get breakfast going without flipping on a light switch. All right. Another thing we got to do in the dark morning and night is feed Howie. Most of the time, Joe and Bonnie do this, but since they're gone, we're taking care of them. And you might be asking, why are you using a, a lantern if you've got headlamps? And that's a great question, but... If you're anything like me, you always forget where you put something, and so you grab the first thing you can find. So, in which case, if I don't have my headlamp and I'm running outside, again, there are literally hooks everywhere. We got a place where we can always hook this thing. And another reason it's nice to have one of these lanterns with you when you come outside, I will show you. Follow me. Our trail to the outhouse right here. And then we take the lantern and hang it right there on a coat hanger. Look, another hook. And again, there's hooks everywhere. So you grab a flashlight or you grab a lantern, you grab the first thing you can find because when it's dark for 20 hours a day, we do most everything with some sort of artificial light of some kind, so that's about it. We'll head back inside because it is 15 degrees below zero right now. 
All right, so it is 9.30 in the morning now, and as you can see behind me, natural light is starting to come through these windows. Little update now, it is exactly 11 o'clock, and as you can see outside, lots of natural light coming in through the house. With that, we take these, and we aim this little solar panel, and we chase the sun all day with these things. So we turn them, as the sun rotates in the sky, just to get as much charge as possible. Now I'm coming to you from outside the house. It is 1.45 in the afternoon. Show you the angle of the sun right now. Very, very low in the sky. And one thing that's very important for us on these short days is with beautiful blue skies like this, we have to take advantage of solar power. Today we're probably gonna get uh, two, three, four, <laughs> less than four hours of sunlight. Not a whole lot of charge goes into the bank of batteries in the lodge, but this helps a little bit. So it's key that I come out here in the morning, uh, scrape off any frost, sweep off any snow, whatever happened the night before, this needs to be clean. So we're getting the full potential of whatever sunlight we're getting this time of year. So like Zach said, we kind of have to follow the sun for these lanterns. So I'm going to move them into another windowsill in the living room. When the sun is only in the sky running really quick, we got to move those lanterns around a couple times a day to keep up with the sun. It moves quick. Yeah. Lightning fast this time of year. Getting ready to do dishes here. Got our water piping hot from the wood stove. Hey, look, another hook. <laughs> Automatic place to hang another lantern. Yeah. All right, let's do some dishes and maybe call it a night. All right, so now that we've taken you throughout the whole day and shown you the lights that we've used to do our chores, to do dinner, to get the kids ready for bed. There's one more thing, a uh, really big thing that I wanted to show you because the solar panel charges a bank of batteries and for the first time since this place was originally built back in the 1950s and then added on to in the late 90s, there has never been a light switch in the kitchen, dining room, or living room up until last year. I want to show you that. We hardwired this light switch into the bank of batteries. So every time that light behind the camera comes on, it is sucking immediate power right from the battery. So we don't keep it on very often. We turn it on when we're eating dinner at the dining room table and things like that. So I'll show you that here. We have five LED bulbs that are all five watts each. And honestly, when we don't have guests here at the lodge or the batteries are getting kind of low, we can go from sucking 25 watts of power down to 20 or 15 just by unscrewing a couple of them. So that's kind of what we do. Now I am going to show you a quick recap of all the lights that have been used around here and the things that we prefer the most and what we use today. All right, so the kerosene lanterns have always been a really neat go-to in 70s, 80s, and 90s. We don't really use them much today. These just kind of sit around more as decoration. These ones here um, is a remote light switch actually in a certain frequency turns these on. These ones we didn't really show in the video today because we use them in the bedroom and in the shower house during the summer months. This one here is kind of neat. You can either magnetize it to a metal wall or a metal strip on your ceiling or Velcro in the back. And it's kind of cool, it looks just like a normal light switch. You can Velcro that inside a wall of an outhouse or a pantry, and the light switch just is immediate light right there on some LED bars. This one's really cool, we use this one a lot in the kitchen. Our kitchen cabinets are metal, so anything 
with a magnet on the back, like this magnet sticks right up underneath our kitchen cabinets. This one is really bright. And uh, our main three go-to lights that we use all the time right now are our headlamps. We walk around pretty much for 16 hours a day with these on our heads. And these solar powered and USB powered light, when we're not getting any solar charge, we can still charge these with the generator. And then a certain type of flashlight. It doesn't really matter which kind. We're happy with this because when the generator is running, we can charge these batteries and they're charged in less than a half hour. So this is really slick. And the kids love this because this twists up illuminates the whole ceiling like you've seen. So that's kind of our spread and that's how we get through these long winter nights. So now we'll end the video with a little Q&A to answer a few of your questions that we got these past couple weeks regarding life out here without electricity and the dark of winter. So enjoy the rest of your evening or afternoon or morning with all the electricity that you have at your home and I hope I've shed some light on our current situation here. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Peace. All right, so one last thing we wanted to do to close out this video was answer a couple questions that we threw out on social media this week. Do a little Q&A to wrap this up. But before I do, uh, I just wanted to say really quick that we got an Amazon affiliate um, link set up. So I'm kind of excited about that. Just want to let you know in advance, I'm going to link below in this video all the lighting that I can find. If you're interested in any of that, if you click the links below, um, if you buy them on Amazon, then we actually will make a small commission. So that's cool. And that doesn't affect the price for you. It just means that Amazon.com makes less money and gives us like a little bit of money. So let's start with a Q&A. Question from Brian. How many hours of light during the shortest days of the year do we get versus the longest days of the year? Okay, so we're about 200 miles from the Arctic Circle uh, south. And so shortest days of the year, we get three hours and 26 minutes of actual sunlight. And that makes for about five hours of really good natural light outside. So, and then in the summer, about 19 hours of actual sunlight and then when the sun goes down in the northwest behind denali and the alaska mountains it really doesn't get dark question number two a couple folks asked really similar questions so this is to answer vani and melissa i'll maybe have you start this one they asked what do you do to occupy your time when there isn't much daylight and then an extension of that is, yes, how do you not get bored? So my routine with the girls is pretty pretty similar what it would be in town, honestly. We get up, we have breakfast and get dressed and do all your normal everyday stuff. And then we do school. Um, we've mentioned before that we homeschool um, partly out of necessity and partly because we chose to. Chloe is in first grade and Eileen's still doing pre uh, pre kindergarten. Don't you just love school? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Um, it's just hard. I don't like it. Yeah, he it's hard. He does not like school. And it's getting harder and harder, and you're getting smarter and smarter. Yes. All right. <laughs> so while Alyssa is uh, schooling the girls, maybe working out, doing meal prep. Uh, taking advantage of the most natural light that she can. The uh, same goes for me, uh, Joe and Bonnie, when they're here, or just taking advantage of the most natural light. So if there's chores to do outside, whether it's chopping wood, shoveling snow during these long winter nights, you just try to take advantage of it while the sun's shining. Another thing, when this, when it's light outside, we try and get outside. If it's cold, you know, it, it might not be for very long. Right now we're in a cold snap and the temperatures have been very cold. So we actually haven't like, been outside at all in a week. But when the temperatures are not freezing, freezing, like below zero, we get outside even if it's just for a little bit. Because otherwise you do get cabin fever. 
and you get sick of being inside and you do start to get bored. What do we do not to get bored? Well, we do all sorts of things, but we still do get bored. It's just the way it is. Um, but we, we play games. We, um, Zach plays guitar, so we'll play music sometimes. Um, we read a lot of books. We do <laughs> arts and crafts. We bake. Alyssa and I were talking about it a little bit, and we thought, you know, it's okay to be bored, I guess, a little bit. Like, you know, um, you get your mind working, you think, maybe you have to dig yourself out of that, that pit of boredom and say, okay, let's get creative. And that's helped a lot with the kids. You know, when the kids are like, dad, I'm so bored. Maybe that's all right. Go pick up a book and... She's learning to read. She, she reads really well. So, you know, I think that's cultivated in times of boredom. You just figure out more creative things to do. Ailey, what's one of your favorite things to do when you're bored? Mm, probably color. Color? Or maybe look at a book. Yeah, those are all good things, huh? What color about... and look at books. Yeah. And what about you, Chloe? What's one of your favorite things to do when you're bored? Um, I play Legos, I color, and I make crafts. I just do all sorts of things if I can think of something. Yeah, that's true. They're very creative. We play together, we <coughs> do a lot of stuff, we play with our dollhouse. Yeah. We just play with all of us. They're busy little yeah. people. All right, so we're going to wrap up this Q&A with one last question here from Emmy. Actually, our sister-in-law, um, she brings up a good question here. It says, does having dimmer lighting in the winter affect your eyesight? And do your eyes feel strained when you're reading and doing stuff like that? For me, I, I don't feel like it's really affected my eyesight. I do find different times when I'm doing certain things that I really, really need to use more light. Um, anytime you're doing something that needs detail work like whether you're reading or chopping onions something you don't really want to have dim lighting for so you don't you know so you don't chop off, chop a, finger. off a finger or something yeah. um i kind of found myself having to actually just go get another light rather than try and squint and make it through um as far as reading goes i have been an avid reader my whole life i love reading i love reading books and so using a lantern or a book light or a headlamp doesn't bother me. For me, it does. I only like to read with natural light coming into the house. I can't really read with a headlamp on my head. Um, with one of those LED lanterns hanging over my shoulder, it definitely starts to strain my eyes. Even after I just read a bedtime story for the girls, that's about all I can take. Um, the problem is editing all these videos over the past year and a half sitting in pure darkness because we're off grid and I can't just go flip on a light switch um, has strained my eyes so bad that now I am terribly nearsighted and I did just have to get glasses last year. So mm -hmm. it did affect my eyesight. Um, it does to this day and I do only enjoy reading with natural light. You should go get your glasses and show the people. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, so... I will, I'll only use these. I don't need them when I'm on the computer now because I'm so nearsighted, never used to be. So this is a new addition to my face. Anyways, I think we'll wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching again, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye bye.